Hi guys, it's Harvey from All Haunts Pool and Spa. We're going to label this Jandy Part 2. All right, and this comes out of um, a Jandy training book, okay? And um, we just want to go through this and educate you. This is on 99, 9 tenths, everybody's heater is on their manual. That's why I always say, read and understand your manual. I don't care if you had it professionally done. Read the whole book and understand it. <coughs> Excuse me. But let's start from square one, okay? Here's this pump. Here's our pool pump. Remember about hydraulics. Before the other YouTubes, I did a hydraulics. From the beginning of this pump, I say to the beginning of this 90 or anything you got, you want minimum four times pipe diameter. So if this is a two inch pipe, you want from this pump before any 90, eight inches. I say six to 10 times, but luckily you sometimes can get four. But minimum, minimum is four inches of pipe clearance to the front of that pump. So from the pump, we go to a filter, okay? We have to have filtered water before we see any uh, pressure pumps, uh, heaters, anything. So right now it goes from pump to filter, all right? So the argument's sake, we had a pressure cleaner. Where would we put the pressure cleaner? Well, because pressure cleaner robs water, it would be after the heater. Um, I would put it before the check valve, definitely before the chlorinator, okay? Uh, definitely before the chlorinator. I would put it somewhere here, and the reason why is because the chlorine gas can, if you put plummet right here, can attack your um, booster pump for your pressure cleaner, pool pressure cleaner. So I would put your pressure cleaner somewhere here. <coughs> Excuse me again. So we got water going into your heater and then coming out. I don't like this scenario because I like to bypass a heater, and my other YouTubes will tell you why I like to bypass heaters. That's if you do the rest of the thing. And that's fully drain them of water. Because if you leave water sitting in the heaters, it will settle out, pH will drop, and it'll still eat away your uh, heat exchanger. Then comes out and hits a check valve. <clears throat> Excuse me again, I don't know what's going on with me this morning. Everybody knows I do these YouTubes live, okay? It's not preempted. It's like national TV. Now we go. Now we want to put, I know this chlorinator looks close. We want to put this chlorinator as far as way as possible of this check valve. Also, I would recommend putting in a Hartford loop. And a Hartford loop basically comes out and it's a 90. Well, I would never put 90s. I like 45s. But I would do a 90, 90, 90, 90. And what happens is chlorine gas comes, it likes going up, likes going across, really doesn't like coming down. But it will. It will come down, okay? So it'll come down, hit this acid check valve, and hit a roadblock, okay? But keep in mind, every year you should put a new acid check valve in, all right? That is a hobby personal tip, okay? Now let's see. In these bypass filters, um, I have another way to bypass heaters that I personally like. I do not like this scenario, and if you email me, I can draw up a little thing the way I make them and makes it less confusing. 
Because this is where everybody, everybody rewinds up from problems. The heater starts knocking. The reason why is because um, your excellent build, pool builder put this in and said, okay, this is where you put your valves. You turn this on, turn this on, and everybody forgets where this valve should be. Just to let you know, this is a ball valve, a handle ball valve, and this is really a bad example. This ball valve should be this way, totally, totally off. So you see all the water going through here. The only way I would semi bypass this heater, again, if you have a large pump system and you're pumping too much water volume through this heater. But <clears throat> the other thing I would do if I did that kind of scenario, I would put in your pressure switch. You can get them in Granges. Uh, a lot of people sell them. Is a pre-adjustable um, flow monitoring sw uh, switch. It monitors how many gallons per minute it, you preset, and it is adjustable. And you put it on the pressure loop of the safety system. So if you drop below that, it turns off and says PS, and you will stop dry firing these heaters. But argument's sake, we're at two inch or two and a half inch. Inch and a half to me should be outlawed. Yeah, everybody knows that. We would have this fully on, this fully on, and this off. All right? Goes back. No, well, actually not goes back, but goes through. Hits the, chlor um, the check valve. And then next would be soy the um, chlorinator. I would like to see a Hartford loop and the chlorinator is being as far as way as possible. All right. And this is three heaters. I totally do not agree with this drawing. That's personal, my opinion. To me, this is plumb the wrong way. But um, um, that's my personal feeling. So we won't even get into that. All right. Just I don't agree with that type of scenario. There's a couple of things hydraulically I just don't like about it. I just can imagine, you know, water going, <clears throat> excuse me again, water going in, rushing through. And it, one thing is, if you do in a scenario like this, you never want to put a just 90 here. You want to put a T and you want to put a cap here. All right, you want to get it about a six inch piece of pipe and you want to put a cap here. This way here it gives it semi semi back pressure still gives proper water flow to this. Everybody thinks well I put a 90 it's getting excellent flow. No. You want to put a T little 6 inch thing or 8 inch piece of pipe with a cap right here. That heater will get more flow if you do it that way. I don't well I'm not going to argue with Jandy but I don't like how this is plumbed. But anyway, these these two items I would totally, totally agree with. Again, let's <clears throat> recap, though, on this one. If we have a pressure cleaner, where would we put our tap for our pressure cleaner? Well, we need, constantly need to see water. So really, in theory, we can't put it anywhere here, right? Because if we bypass and turn off the heater, pressure cleaner would never see water in this piece of pipe. All right, so we would have to put it after this ball valve. All right, after this ball valve and after this T, because water doesn't like backing up, though it will. All right, I would put it after this T. I would put your your uh, junction for your pressure cleaner. That's personally what I would do right there. So anyway, pipe diameter, four to six times. Um, multiplied your pipe before any 90. Three-way valve, any kind of valve. Goes through the filter. After the filter, you can start plumbing things. If you don't have a heater, you can start putting things in. You have a heater. You don't want to rob water from the heater, so you put your pressure cleaners after the heater. Okay, guys, 
this we're gonna label this Jandy Part Two. I'm gonna keep it coming. Um, it's raining out today, and um, I don't think I'm going to the beach. So we'll we'll do Jandy Part Three and Part Four and Part Five. Hope this was helpful. Again, I'm Harvey. All parts pool and spa. You can email me your questions at harveyallparts at gmail.com. Thanks, guys.